We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Well, good morning, uh, CA family. This is Roland. <laughs> and I'm Lakeisha. Where we are sitting in for our leaders, Hassani and Danielle, um, who are on a mission. They are in Lagos, um, um, South Africa, and we are here with you all to continue our discussion that we've been having all week long, Signs of Infidelity. And listen, we're going to have a great show as we've been having great discussion all week. And we know that infidelity is a plague that is taking over um, a lot of marriages in our society today. Society has um, created this culture of um, we're going to just do what we want to do or you only live once. So let's get it while we can. But in reality, reality, um, being married is a blessing from God and being married is absolutely a, a, a gift that you have. And when you have that with your spouse and you allow infidelity to step in, we create a mess. We create a disaster. But there is always a ramp in the bush. We are here to help at Couples Academy. And we thank you all for sharing with us. And we're going to have a great show today. How are you doing today, Lakeisha? Man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm excited to be here. Good to be here with you, my fellow Avenger. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation. It's been good, Roland. It's been a good conversation all week, just looking at the different signs that your spouse might be cheating on you. And so I'm just excited to continue the conversation today. Cool. And listen, we want to make sure we understand that all signs does not mean that your spouse is having an affair. It just looks like it. And we have to recognize the difference. We have to pray for discernment so that we can know the difference of those signs that are actually um, valid and those signs that are not. Right. And so um, before we go any further, we want you to like, share and subscribe. Um, let other people know that we are here. We are here to help. Um, we are serving you, and we want to serve you in a spirit of excellence. So make sure you let someone know to like, share, and subscribe. I'm excited, Lakeisha, also because we have Last Chance Weekend coming up, November 11th through the 13th, right? Yes. We're coming towards the end of the year, and this is that time when people are in a crisis mode of what yes. should I do? Do I stay? Do I go? I love them. I love them not. Like, how do I handle this situation going into um, the new year. And we also have one in December, December um, 9th through 11. And you want to take advantage of these opportunities or if, if you're in a space of needing help, we want to make sure that you get the help that you need so you can go into the new year with a new you and a new marriage. Yes. Yes. Um, Listen, people are trying to figure out what they should do around the holidays, right? Trying to figure out what they should do. Instead of you worrying about Christmas gifts, you need to be worrying about the gift of saving your marriage. You have to make sacrifices for your marriage. If you want something that you've never had, you got to be willing to do something you've never done. So you may have to sacrifice gifts this Christmas for the gift of being able to restore your marriage. I like that. That was cool, Lakeisha. You have to give a gift, like give the gift to yourself. You know, yes. do something for yourself for once. You know, we've taken care of the kids. We got the kids off the school. You know, we've been buying clothes all year and everything else. And people not knowing that we're in crisis mode. But mm -hmm. the gift that you can give to yourselves to one another is the gift of each other. You know, well, and, and it's the gift that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps on giving. Look at you. The <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. And it really does. You know, we want to have legacies that are left, that are long lasting from generation to generation. And in order to do that, we have to break generational cycles, generational yes. curses. And it can start with us today, regardless to what the circumstances have been, regardless to what society has said and what can and cannot be. The images that we see about what marriage is and what is not, we have the ability to change those things and we can do something about it. So Sorry. let's take full advantage of it. 
So we're going to jump right into our discussion today. And we want to talk about, you know, we're talking about the signs of infidelity, right? And one of the signs of infidelity is becoming defensive, right? You know how those folks, um, you know, you every time you ask them a question, they become defensive. They become attitudish, right? They become in, they, they have this way of, you know, what you keep asking me that for and, and, and kind of acting as if you're bothering them right? That's a sign that I have some other stuff going on. And because I have some other stuff going on, I don't want you to mess up this feeling that I have, right? And so we become defensive with everything, you know, the food too cold, they don't have enough ice in the drink, you know, just every nitpicking thing we'll find to be defensive. And we try to justify that defensiveness. I had a long day at work, you know, I'm, I have this project that I'm working on. When in all actuality, you have a whole mess happening that you don't want me to know about. And that's why you're being defensive. What you think about that? Absolutely. And <clears throat> this is something that I think, you know, as practitioners, we've actually seen, right? Think about the couples who we've been working with, even couples who come to Last Chance Weekend. You know, they're so negative. They're in such a negative space. And they're projecting a lot of times what's going on on the inside of them onto their spouse, because truly the person that they're really mad at is themselves Mm -hmm. because they've allowed themselves to sink into this hole, get into this dark pit and go against everything that they even believe. I think about Enneagram style number six, six is value loyalty over everything. Mm -hmm. And when I encounter a six, who has been unfaithful. Oh my gosh, the inner turmoil, the struggle that they're going through is is debilitating because they can't believe themselves Mm -hmm. that they went there. You know what I mean? They stoop to that level because they're just like, this goes against my own morals, values, ethics, standards. How could I do this to the person I love and how can I do this to myself? Yes. How can yes. I do this to another person? You know, so they're riddled with guilt. And a lot of times that guilt <clears throat> and that shame and that disappointment within themselves is projected onto their spouse. And that's why uh, a lot of times they get hypercritical. And yeah, also and- you need a reason to continue to cheat, right? Right, right. <laughs> Trying to justify and- your cheating behavior. Right. And, and it's so unfortunate because I've also seen where the the number six that was the offender now, because they are having this inner turmoil, you had to have done something. Your spouse, you had to have done something. Right. right. I mean, I, I got to right. find something. I will look under a rock <laughs> behind a tree right in the roof because you had to have done. If I did it and I'm the loyalist. Right. Yeah. I know you had to have done something and we will, they will create a narrative in their head to think that somebody else did something because they have this inner turmoil. Right. Yes. We have yes. this, this pulling and this, this anxiety within ourselves that we cannot get over mm-hmm. because we have done something that is out of our rim of doing. Yeah. And, and we have to come back to ourselves to make sure, listen, you made a mistake. You you let yourself go, but it's not the end of the world. The chapter of your life is not over. And then that's when you have to take responsibility and accountability to make the necessary adjustments for yourself and for your family. That's right. So um, that's that's it's, it's a crazy thing. You know, I was um, my wife was reading the book, um, The Anatomy of an Affair. Right. Mm-hmm. And by Dave Carter. And one of the things that it talked about, because we talk about infidelities and signs of infidelity and when the, we look at the reality of it infidelity starts very minimal right it's, it's it starts at a hello and it goes i mean we could take that hello based on how it was said and turn it into something um really big right you know you the water fountain conversations oh i like that tie you have on you know your shoes look nice and we'll take that one small thing and then it turns it to something so big, right? And now we find ourselves because we're getting a little attention at work, right? Then we're not getting enough attention at home. And so now, here again, we become defensive 
because you're not talking to me the way that person talked to me. You didn't speak to me when I came in the way that person spoke to me. And we create, we compound issue on top of issue on top of issue, and they all are unnecessary. And that defensiveness continues on and on and on. Yeah. And then, you know, then we get into creating these environments where you have a spouse who is 100 percent insecure, 100 percent insecure because um, the one who is the unfaithful is constantly criticizing everything that they're doing and they're getting into these comparisons. You know, they're comparing their spouse to the affair partner. Mm -hmm. which is so inappropriate. It is one of the most hurtful things mm -hmm. you could ever do to your spouse because your spouse will never be able to live up to mm -hmm. what the affair partner did because the dynamics are different. They're mm -hmm. completely different. You know, that affair partner, I think I mentioned this the other day, that affair partner, they don't have to talk to you about bills. They don't have to talk to you about schedules and these kids and, you know, they don't have to talk about all of that stuff that, that we don't even want to talk about, but we don't have a choice. You know, we mm -hmm. have to. So, you know, it gets to be bliss and mm -hmm. beautiful over with the affair partner, but it's business and busyness over at home, you know? And what we have to understand that when you take care of business, it has longevity to it. It carries more weight than entertaining, right? Frivolous entertainment that is only temporary. Right. We want to build on foundations that are long lasting, that are going to be sustainable, because, listen, the, 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 the weather changes all the time, every time of the year. And just like the weather change, so does the fair partner when you get yourself in those circumstances and situations. So let's not try to do that. Listen, folks, we're just getting started. We're having great discussion and conversation. We're going to go to a quick commercial and we will be right back. Hey everybody, my name is Sasani Pettiford. And I'm Danielle Pettiford, and we are the co-founders of Couples Academy. And we cannot wait to join you all the way in Lagos, Nigeria. Yes, for the International Family Life Practitioners Conference. Listen, it's going to be happening on October 20th and 21st at 9 a.m. It's going to be at the David Christian Center. So make sure you show up if you're a therapist, a practitioner, a coach, if you're anywhere in the marriage space and you want to take your business and your ministry to the next level, be there. Five men from all walks of life come together in one place for one purpose. There is a collective harmony that produces an amplification of power that leaves an impact on the lives of men that cannot be erased. A fraternity of legendary men, all at the tipping point, on the precipice of greatness, meeting for one weekend to turn their worlds inside out. For the first time ever, the Foundry Experience. Not an event, not a seminar or retreat, but an opportunity to come face to face with the man you were always destined to be. If you want a life that's better than the one that you are living, meet us January 2023 for the Foundry Experience. Welcome back, folks. You're sharing with us. Thank you for sharing with us. I am Roland, 
and with my homegirl practitioner, Lakeisha, we're talking with you all about signs of infidelity. We've been having great discussion and we're going to continue on um, with what, you, what we're talking about today. Yeah, I just want to shout out the people who are here right quick. You know, Mr. Ben, Faithful Ben, Faithful Vashon, <laughs> Dark Knight, Tiffany, <gasps> Gonzalez in the house. <laughs> hey, Daryl, how you doing? Thanks for your comment. And I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to Chris and Mary Catherine. Tori, good to see you. Thank you guys for all your support. Thank you for watching. And if you have not, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Make sure you download the Couples Academy app. Thank you guys for being here this morning. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're talking about signs of infidelity. You know, it's one of those things that we know can happen. We, It's one of those things, again, that has seemed to take over, but society does not dictate what God has put together, right? And we have to be very vigilant about the things that we say, the things that we do, and how we handle ourselves um, when we're out what one with one another and when we're out in public amongst the devices and all, all of the, the um, you know, things that are patients. <laughs> temptations, that's what I was looking for, the temptations <laughs> of this world, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we have to make sure that we don't fall into those temptations to get caught up in things that are not beneficial to us. So the next point that we want to go to is becoming um, extra flirtatious. Becoming this extra flirtatious. Go ahead, this Lakeisha. Will, this <laughs> will get you cut Take all away, the way. <laughs> Sliced, diced. <laughs> Listen. Because you get comfortable, right? You're so comfortable. You're used to doing inappropriate things because you're engaged in an affair and it just lowers your inhibitions, puts you in this place where you feel as if you're invincible. And so flirting is just a natural course of action because you know, a lot of times I think people engage in affairs because they're trying to see if they still got it. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Let me let me just let me just see, you know, if this person is willing to give me the time of day. Let me see if they're willing to give me some attention, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't think oftentimes, most times, I don't think it was with the intent to take it that far. You know what I mean? To mm -hmm. go that far. But when you open Pandora's box, you don't know what's going to pop out. Right? right. But I think that, you know, it starts off a lot of times very innocent and there's no intent for it to turn into a full fledged affair. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it does start with just wanting to see, you know, if this person will will respond, you know, mm -hmm. if if they find me attractive, if they can find something about me that maybe my spouse no longer cares, seems to care about, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just looking for something to make them feel alive because they feel dead inside and life has gotten drab and boring and, you know, they just want something. So a lot of times that flirting is just, I just want to see, I just want to see. And when you get out there and see, sometimes you see more than you need to see <laughs> and you go where you don't need to go. But yeah, it makes sense to me, 100%. Yeah, you know, we, we as men and women, we have this, this idea that we're going to push the envelope, right? Mm. And we think that we have control of pushing the envelope to say, well, I'm not going to let it go this far. I'm not going to, mm. I have control over it, right? And you don't have control over it, right? You The, the control you had, you've just given it away when you considered pushing the envelope because yeah. you had control before you actually pushed the envelope. Right. We use yep. our charm, our smile, our mannerisms, <laughs> right, to use that as means of being flirty. And mm -hmm. then it gets us in a lot of trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we try to size up the affair partner or we try to size up the person that becomes the affair partner to say, oh, they're nice. Oh, they're not going to do anything. When in all actuality, you have just met crazy, crazy, crazy Linda, crazy Joe, and now <laughs> you want to put yourself in the situation <laughs> where crazy Linda is coming after you and your kids. <laughs> crazy Joe is sitting on the front porch trying to figure out when you coming out because you thought 
you thought that if you showed a little leg or if you wore the right tie that, you know, <laughs> you know, you pushing the envelope, as we would say, and not realizing that you're putting yourself in a danger zone. You're putting yourself absolutely. in a place that you have absolutely no business being in, but because you wanted to see, yeah. you wanted to see if you still got it, right? <laughs> No, yeah. you don't got it no more. Stay yourself out of the streets. Do you hear me? Right? <laughs> you use that energy and put it in yourself, put it into your spouse. We have to create a new atmosphere. Yeah. You know, let your let we talked about it before. Let your spouse be your affair partner. Let 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 that be your affair partner. You know. Because <laughs> I said, who was that peeking in the bush? <laughs> <laughs> Roland, here's the thing. Listen, this is what I know about me. Okay. I, I'm gonna confess, I'm telling you, I am a born again, like I am redeemed, Roland. I'm a redeemed cheater. I mean, not cheater, uh flirter, flirter. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I'm born again, Roland, because I'm telling you, it came so natural mm. for me to flirt. Mm. And I realized that, man. When I get married, like I gotta shut this down, <laughs> like because right. you know I know what I'm working with. I know about all this goodness I got. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can't be over here flirting with people because I know about the law of attraction and I know mm -hmm. who I attract and mm -hmm. I know how to attract. So I'm like, listen, this flirting has got to stop. It has to stop. You know, dating when I'm in a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, prior to us even getting serious about our relationship, I knew I needed to to pump the brakes on that flirting thing because I know it's dangerous. And and like I said, while your intentions may be good, you have to be so careful with that. You're playing with fire. Mm -hmm. So if you want to flirt with somebody, <clears throat> I still flirt, but I'm flirting with the one who I'm married to. Right. I flirt with him. <laughs> right. And that's it. Listen, we, we don't realize the, we don't know who we're dealing with when we're dealing with other people that we don't know. And it's just like, you know, on a Greyhound track, right? The Greyhounds come out of the gate and they're chasing after this bunny, right? And you have all these Greyhounds chasing after this bunny. Well, when you start flirting, this, this, the, this, this person, whether it's man or woman, they're chasing after the bunny, right? And you put them in a situation that they will go whatever lengths they have to go, whatever speed they have to go, whatever obstacle they have to go over to get to the bunny. But you marry, right? You didn't put yourself in a situation that the bunny that they're going after is not for them. You've exposed yourself to something, to a situation, to an atmosphere. that. So now you're going to work, and every time you go to the break room to get coffee, there he go. There she go. Every time you go to the water fountain, there they go. Because we have pushed this envelope too far, being yes. extra flirtatious, mm -hmm. right? Knowing what we're working with and, and, and putting it out there to, to cause harm. Not just to ourselves, not just to our spouses, because we have to remember that whatever we do, whatever decision we make, consequences come with those, good yes. or bad. And they don't just affect us, but they affect everybody associated with us. That goes with our spouse, our children, and, and our relatives. Because if they can't get through to you one way, they'll mm -hmm. find another way to do it. Yeah, and the reality is we have to start communicating our cravings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a craving for attention, you have a craving for someone to desire you, then you got to communicate that with your spouse. Like, if, like I said, I naturally am a flirter. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I have to communicate to my spouse that, listen, I need flirting in this mm -hmm. relationship. I'm going to flirt mm -hmm. with you. I need you to flirt with me. We got to communicate that. And if your craving is for compliments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need you to compliment me because that is what makes me feel desired or that's what makes me feel sexy. That's what makes me feel attractive. Whatever the case may be, you have mm -hmm. to communicate your cravings with your spouse and stop trying to go outside of your marriage to find the thing that that's missing or to look for the thing, you know, that you're lacking. 
because mm-hmm. everything that you want and need is in your spouse. It's in the person that you're married to. You just got to figure out how to get it out. You know, you just got to pull it out of them. And I already know, I already know why should I have to, why they can't just, why they just don't know. I know a lot of times they don't know because you haven't communicated. Mm -hmm. And if you have communicated and they're still not giving you the thing that you're asking for, then it could be that they don't know how. Mm -hmm. This is a situation where they don't know how and they do know how, but they're just unwilling. Let's get to the why of that. (laughs) Excuse me. Why are they unwilling Mm -hmm. to give you what it is that you're asking for? Mm -hmm. There's something that is going on in that relationship that has created a disconnect or created a block that prevents your spouse from being able to satisfy your cravings. And so you Mm got to get to the root of whatever that is. We have to be intentional on creating safe zones. We have to, and when I talk about safe zones, safe zones mean I should be able to come to you to tell you what I'm craving. I should be able to yes. come to you to tell you what's on my mind, what the de- what desire I have, because we are ever growing, right? And it's not I'm bringing up something to you that I want you to do that somebody else did. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm growing. I have desires. I have fantasies as well. And if I want those fantasies to play out, those mm-hmm. memories to play out, I want to do it with you. Right. So I should be able to come to you and say, hey, let's try this. Have you ever thought about this? There's a show that comes on uh, Tuesdays, I believe. And I think, uh, is it 9 or 9 30? I think it's 9 p.m. I think it's 9 p.m. (laughs) It's 9 p.m. Talk about it, Lakeisha. Talk about it. Listen, (laughs) our brother's in here. He said, SOS. Boom. Listen, you guys, SOS Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. with your girl. I'm in here breaking down how to electrify these bedrooms, man, how to boost the booms in your bedroom. Like, this is what we're trying to do. Like, y'all don't understand how passionate I am about you rekindling the passion in your relationships. You know, a lot of times we're talking about signs that your spouse is cheating on you. And the reality is this. Many times people cheat because of issues that have gone unaddressed, you know, Mm -hmm. that have not been dealt with. And I understand that that's the majority of the time. But there are times there are times where people cheat because they're not being satisfied sexually. That's the truth. And so rather than cheat get some help, get some assistance. Like this is something that is available to you guys. You can watch the show. You can book a session with me. Let me help you get your sexy back. Okay. I I just cannot stand when I hear conversations about couples who have been married umpteen years and they're saying, well, the fire has burned out in the bedroom and we just got to accept that because that's just is what it is. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You do not receive that. (laughs) You can turn any situation around. It starts with your willingness and your openness to do something that you've never done before. Absolutely. I, I want to look at a couple comments really quick, uh, Lakeisha, if that's okay. Um, yes. Tiffany K. Williams, she said that obsessed is not just a movie. It's real and dangerous. And that is absolutely true. It is very Thanks. real and dangerous. Thanks. And um. <laughs> You know, we don't realize how real and dangerous it is until you get yourself caught up in this situation, which we are pre- trying to prevent you from doing, right? We don't want you to experience um, dangerous and crazy and obsessing. We don't, we don't want you to consider, we don't want you to experience that. So that's why we have the discussions that we have so that we can give you the tools and strategies that you need to prevent dangerous and obsession um, situations to come in your um, in your marriage. Um, there's another one. Um, Chris said, it seems like the betrayed are the only ones trying to fix the other's mistakes all the time. It's like being married to a child. Lakeisha, you, you deal with couples all the time, and it seems like the betrayed partner um, or, or the one that has been offended is the one that seems like to be doing all the work all the time, trying to fix everything. What, what what have you seen with your clients? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, I hear this all the time. And, 
You know, it's unfortunate because <clears throat> you're already dealing with trying to recover from the trauma of infidelity and then you feel like you have all this work to do. And let's just keep it real. It's it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fun. And it just doesn't feel right. And but but the truth is, <clears throat> whether there was infidelity or not, you still have to work on your marriage. So, see, it's all about shifting your mentality. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you focus on the fact that, well, this person did this thing, they caused this thing. And so why should I have to do work? Well, it's because the two of you are one, you know, mm -hmm. you're married. And that means that we both have roles and responsibilities. We both have things that we have to do. And you are misled, misguided if you think that infidelity removes you from your roles and your responsibilities it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that you still have to show up that you still have to do what it is that god requires of a spouse to do infidelity does not change that if you choose to stay mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. we all know that if you cheat then of course biblically you have the right you have the authority to divorce we know that but if you choose to stay that mm -hmm. says that i am willing to forgive. I am willing to do the work. I'm willing to do what needs to be done to make this marriage work, even mm -hmm. though you are the one who is the betrayed. And so you got to shift your mentality to that. Again, whether there was infidelity or not, you still have to show up and you still have to do the work. Listen, I've said it before. The only time that success comes before work is in a dictionary. You have to do the work to be successful and mm. marriage is work. Marriage is a partnership. Marriage is one of those things that two people come together to have the best lives that they can possibly have with each other, despite circumstances and situations that's gonna be thrown at you. Listen, the world is already gonna throw things at you that as a team, you're gonna to have to overcome. Do not add extra um, situations to your marriage, to yourselves, um, unnecessarily, right? So let's do the work to make sure that we have the best versions, one of ourselves and the best versions of our marriage. We want to show up the way that God intends for us to show up, and that is to be the best that we can be. So listen, we've been talking about the signs of infidelity. You know, I've been your host rolling with my good friend, Lakeisha, and we hope that we've been able to help you Please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. Call us so that we can help you, so that we can be of assistance to you. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the a.m.